Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to start a new series on the Dell Precision 7920 rack or the R7920. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on processors. But in the video series as a whole, we're going to cover processors, RAM, drives. We're going to show you how to update your iDRAC. We're going to show you mass updates, how to update your BIOS, plus a bunch more. Click that like, smash that subscribe. Let's get going. Hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell Precision R7920 workstation. Let's just hop into the good stuff. So there are two CPUs inside. It takes an Intel Xeon LGA3647. So what types of procs is that? Well, that's going to be your first and your second gen Xeon scalable. So that's your silvers, your golds, your platinum. So that's your 4100 silver, your 4200 silver, your 5100 and your 6100 gold, and your 5200 and your 6200 gold, your 8100 platinum and your 8200 platinum. And if you're wondering what the difference between the ones and the twos is, the ones are the first gen and the twos are the second gen. So if it's 62 or 82, that two is second gen scalable. If it's 61 or 81, that one is first gen scalable. Pretty self-explanatory, but that's how their codes go. So those will be the types of procs that are compatible. People ask all the time, hey, what proc do you recommend? And really that depends on your application and your budget for that matter. But the scalable procs have come down drastically in price over the last six months. So you can get a ton of good procs out there. So we break it down into three categories. We have our low end, our value, and our high end. And really they're kind of self-explanatory to be honest. The low end is going to be, you know, lower specs and super budget friendly that are going to be cheaper procs as a whole that you can throw in for really next to nothing nowadays. And then there's going to be our value procs, which are going to still be good row bus procs that have great specs but are still very very budget friendly and then there's the high end procs and even the high end procs have come down but some of the super high end procs are still a little bit expensive when you compare how cheap some of the first gen scalables have got but that's how we break it down so let's go ahead and throw up our chart and show you all the uh, procs that we recommend so now the chart's up you can see there's a lot of good options and this is a good time you can pause it and just kind of look through them and these are just some of the few that some of the ones that we recommended but there's a ton of good procs in this series. So uh, if you go to our website, there's a page dedicated to this and we'll actually throw it up right now. But here's a, a page for the CPUs that are compatible. And there's even more outside of this. These are just the ones that we support, but there's a ton of great options. So if you need any help choosing them, just email our sales team, sales at cloudengines.com and we can definitely help you choose the right proc for your system. All right, now that we know more about the types of procs that are compatible, let's talk about how to install it. But before we do, I'm gonna grab my ESD gear, be right back. All right, have my ESD gear safe to work on the machine. So all you're gonna need, and I say all, there's a few things you're gonna need. Obviously the CPUs that you're gonna be upgrading to. I like to keep uh, spots for the two CPUs that I'm taking out that you can put into your tray. We're gonna need a T30 bit. So that's gonna be a T30 bit. That's what you'll need to remove the heat sink. We're going to need a clean rag because we're going to need to wipe the bottom of that heat sink when we take it off so that when we install our new CPUs there's no old thermal paste and then bringing talking about thermal paste here's the new thermal paste so we're going to put new thermal paste to apply on top so those are going to be all the items that we need for this upgrade so let's toss everything to the side just kidding so let's put everything to the side and let's go ahead and open our top all right, so we're going to need to remove our air baffle. So nice and simple, you're just going to take this and lift it straight up. And now we're going to have access to CPU 1 and CPU 2. Just for the sake of the video, even though you can, for the most part, see everything, I'm going to go ahead and remove our fan bank here. You definitely do not have to do that at home. That is just uh, solely for you just to get a better view on camera, but you don't have to do that at home. So, all right, so now that we've removed our fan banks and our air baffle, and you can get a, a good view of everything, we're going to grab our T30 bit, and we're going to move heat sink number one. And this is really pretty simple. There's only two screws, screw one and screw two. And then when you're done, you take these two blue clips right here, and you're going to push those two blue clips. So I'm going to set this down so it's not confusing. So this blue clip, blue cl clip is going to go this way. And this one is going to go this way. And then you just lift it up. So it's pretty simple as a whole. So let's go ahead and put our T30 bit in here. And we're just going to get this unscrewed. And you'll feel it actually come off the motherboard. And that's actually one of the reasons I'm a big fan of 
just the regular old manual screwdrivers as opposed to the electric ones because I'm uh, less likely to damage anything and I can really get a good feel for the heat sink coming off the motherboard. All right, so now that being said, we're going to push our two blue clips. So I'm going to push this one with my little index finger here and with my thumb back here, we'll just push them together and then just lift this straight up once we've done that. And now we have access to our CPU. So you will notice that when we lifted it up, the CPU is actually connected to the heat sink. So uh, you need to be very careful that when you lift everything up, you just go straight up, which really the, uh, the pegs here kind of help that are designed that way to kind of help it come straight up. But it's always something to be wary of. All right, so you'll notice when we removed the heat sink, the CPU comes with it. There's the black clip right here that actually, or the bracket, I should say, that holds the CPU to the heat sink. And this is really important. It's all one piece that gets put together. Essentially, it's a kit. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to slowly work our way around and start pulling clips off to start removing the, uh, the black bracket here so that we can actually take our CPU off. So now that we've gotten the black clip disconnected, we're going to take this off. And really, I shouldn't be working over the thing, but it's helpful to show you guys. Um, so I just always get paranoid being right over the uh, the open pins, especially when you have uh, loose thermal paste, because uh, sometimes you will uh, you'll see this thermal paste is super old and it just flakes off. And the last thing you want is this to, I'm going to put it to the side because I'm getting weary right now. Last thing you want is for this to fall into anything over here, whether that's a dim slot, definitely not the CPU pins. That's the last place you want it, but it could fall into so many different areas and be a real, real issue. Um, so what you're going to need to do to remove this uh, uh, CPU from the clips, there's two little points right here and this is flexible plastic so you can essentially kind of bend it back gently and then just remove it okay and then I'm gonna put this dirty CPU into our uh, tray over here and we're gonna put our new one on but before we do we got to clean all this old nasty thermal paste off because you don't want it flaking over here so what we're gonna do is grab our nice clean rag I'm gonna do this uh, to the side over here because again I just don't want any of this flaking off and getting onto our exposed parts here. That's the last thing you want. Trying to do an upgrade and you mess things up, that's not what you want, right? We're here to make this a better system. All right, so you can see how much thermal paste is on here. I'll kind of scoot this up and it's, you know, it's just kind of nasty and there's flaky and so we'll get this all put to the side and we've got a nice clean heat sink now. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to start, actually one last thing, I also recommend, you'll find sometimes there's some uh, thermal paste on here, it's worth just a quick little clean to get our bracket clean as well, it takes a, a second. So while we're in here, let's just get everything clean and back to square. Okay, so we're going to take our, our bracket, and again, these two points, are, are they're flexible enough where you're going to take your brand new CPU, and you're going to wonder, okay, well, which way, which way does it go? Okay, on the CPU, you see this little gold triangle right there? That gold triangle is very, very important because on the bracket, there's a little triangle that is cut out on the heat sink, there's a little engraving of a triangle right there. And on the motherboard itself, there's a little white triangle right there. That triangle is going to help you lead the way the whole time to match everything up. So we're going to take our gold triangle and put it over here. So it's going to go this way. So I'm just going to slide this under. And once it's under over here, all we're going to do is I have to just pull this back just a little bit and it clips in. All right, so now that we've got this into our bracket and everything is safe, what we're gonna need to do now is put on thermal paste. So I'm gonna set the bracket down right now. We're gonna unscrew the top here for our thermal paste, and we're gonna put a decent amount on, not too, too crazy, uh, but these are pretty big procs, so I like to do a nice little bit in the middle, and then I just kinda do a little bit around the edges. Nothing too crazy, because what you don't want 
Uh, is it to squirt off on the sides and just get a mess all in there and create any damage? But you do need a good amount to also keep it cool. So you, you need kind of a balance. This is a good amount where we kind of like to do. Uh, some of our techs do a little bit more, but for the most part, this is what we're going to do. So, all right, that being said, now where do I put it with the heat sink? How do I line everything back up? Follow your triangle. So you got your triangle right here and you've got your triangle right here. So we're, everything is just gonna link back up like this and just click into place. So now we've actually installed the CPU to the heatsink. So if I were to flip it over, it is safely in there. So now all we have to do is follow the triangles again, triangle, triangle, and we are just gonna set this down nice and softly and get the blue clips on and then we just screw it down and it's that easy that is how you would install or upgrade your cpu and if you're looking for any custom built r7920s please give us an opportunity to help you guys out we would love the opportunity to earn your data center your home labs business we build a ton of gpu servers and this is an amazing gpu server if you're looking for low end or high end uh, we offer everything in between and again we'd love the opportunity to earn your data center's business please email us at sales at cloud that's sales at cloud thanks for stopping by guys take care